All right, so now we have our components in the general region that I want them. Uh, it's pretty good. Uh, they may need to be adjusted a little bit, but the positioning of them is not precise as in I didn't measure it. So I'm going to turn off those layers just because I don't want the, uh, the information overlapping what I'm about to do next, which is uh, tracing. So there's this auto routing feature in uh, EagleCAD and I just went quickly through it and you could see uh, it will just figure out how to pull the routes. Do not use this. This is very amateur <laughs> and it's kind of just a novelty. It's inefficient and maybe uh, Altium might have a better auto, auto routing scheme but uh, a board like this just route it yourself and that's why we paid attention to how we laid everything out so we're going to go ahead and look at our manufacturer's website which is JLC PCB and one of the reasons is because you want to see what their capabilities are and their capabilities are going to help determine our constraints so in Eagle CAD you you built out your constraints and you want to do it according to what the manufacturer is capable of and every manufacturer is different so if we click on DRC we'll see the restrictions and the constraints that are set and so one of the first things I want to look at is the trace width so as we start to lay out our traces how small can we go and most of the dimensions here are in mils but uh, you can put mil or millimeter so now as we scroll down uh, JLPCBs you'll see here is their min trace width and we are doing a double layer PCB so our minimum trace width is 5 mils we have ours set to 6 mils so we're okay and what this DRC this uh, these constraints are going to do is uh, when you and I'll show you this in a minute when you check everything it'll throw a warning saying you've used a trace that's below your minimum so this is just to make sure when we send us off to the manufacturer they don't kick it back and say we can't do this because you're either too too far below or above our min and maxes so this is the spacing right here is our annular rings and uh, this is important for the manufacturer because when they drill out all your vias they tend them and then they need to solder mask them and if you don't have enough uh, large enough annular ring when they go to drill it it will just drill out most of your annular ring so that's why that that's what that restriction does so our annular rings need to have at least three mils around And now we want to know what's our minimum drill size. Uh, this comes into play mostly with vias because vias you have pretty small. So right here our min drill size is 0.2 millimeters. And we're okay there. The limit this is going to uh, change we'll do this later it mostly has to do with tinting your vias uh, and I want to do that in another video so now we're going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and turn the dimension off just because uh, just clean up this drawing a little bit I only want to see what I want to see and right here uh, this will help uh, this button will is what we use to run our traces and we're going to do a width of 0.3 millimeters and in mills this this exceeds so you can see as I pull this around I'm not clicking anything I only left click it once on the uh, pad I'm starting at but you can see uh, it kind of mock does a mock-up of our trace and I like to run my traces with this 45 degree so I left click there and I'm going to left click there and now you can see the air wire disappeared because the air wire represents a disconnection and now I've connected it. And so both of these feet of our tactile switch are connected. 
and right here we see a problem. Uh, it should be able to connect to this foot pad, but it doesn't, and that's a mistake we made in our uh, in our footprint. So we can go ahead and move to the library with everything still open. And what's happening is there is that third leg is it's there, but our green wire in our schematic is not uh, it's not connected to it. And you'll see here in a second what's going on. So if we open up our library and we go into our battery symbol, you'll see this is it. This is the culprit. It's kind of back here, and because I don't have a green wire to it, it's not connected. So if I just move it and overlap it, you know what, I'll just move it just above. That way you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, so we're going to make a change to our symbol. The way it's connected is still going to be the same. And now if we uh, save this library and we go back to our schematic and we do update all under library, you'll see it now. We have a connection point and we are going to connect it. Now we've ensured that it's connected. So now I should be able, there you go, you have an air wire between the foot pad and that wire. So easy, you make a mistake in the symbols in the library, then you can just go move back and forth and everything's connected that way. And now this is just uh, nothing more than a game of connecting the dots. And it's a lot easier to do when you've laid everything out in a way that makes sense. And this is just something you get better at with time, the more practice like anything else. So here's a little trick you can do with your traces. You can snake them between your pads right here. And because we set our constraints for uh, trace spacing from this pad, if it is too close or closer than we had set it, we would get a warning. And that's what's nice about your constraints is you set all your constraints before you even start this process. And you just allow the constraints to do their job so that you can just connect the dots. But I'm gonna go ahead and move this with the Alt key so that I get that smaller resolution and try to center it in between those pads. So now here's our crossover path. So coming from this uh, BJT transistor I will directly connect this one I'll be able to directly connect this one and then you can see I need to somehow cross over uh, those pads. We'll come back to that in just a minute. These ones are pretty straightforward. So I hope by now you can see why uh, the, the library is, is one of the most important steps because how we connect our schematic symbols to our footprints in the library determines how our schematic is the relationship between our schematic and the PCB layout. And now I just connect the dots. I'm not even thinking about the circuit. I'm not thinking about what the capacitor does, what the LED does, if they're connected the right way because I did all that beforehand. Now I can just, just go run through and connect everything. All right, so some of the grounds I left off to, because you're going to see in just a minute, we'll do a ground pour and everything will be connected by VIA. But let's do this crossover. So if I hit the space bar, after I left clicked on the foot pad and I hit the space bar, it'll give me a VIA. And this VIA is going to help connect me to the bottom layer. So I'm working in my top layer. Hit the space bar, which is just a hotkey. And now I have a blue trace. Now this is underneath. So it looks like it's crossing paths, but it's doing so under on the bottom layer. So we are safe. And now I'm just going to cross it. I tend to like to cross the bottom layer and the top layer at 90 degree angles. So you can see the route I chose is crossing the uh, top layer traces at 90. 
and then I just do a space bar to get me a V back up and then I connect it and one of the reasons you wanted to uh, cross that 90 degrees is just you're uh, limiting any current producing uh, magnetic induction to the other trace so if they run in parallel the chances of uh, EMI are much higher so it's kinda just a rule of thumb and so now this uh, you get to connect over here and this would be the other uh, sort of crossover wire we have and now we've handled all of our crossover wires the only thing left to do is connect the grounds and uh, with the grounds I do the space bar to get me a via but I just stop right there and the reason is I'm going to do the whole bottom layer as a ground pour and so it's going to be one giant uh, trace and I'll show you that in the next video and now I want to, uh, it's really not important in this design because we're dealing with a small amount of current. But anytime you have a large pad like this, especially with a heat sink, and you want to uh, do what's called via stitching, and we kind of do a small little array of vias. So I'm going to go ahead and just select this via tool, and I'm going to drop vias in a kind of a grid pattern here. and. You, you've probably seen this, uh, if you've just looked at PCBs, you've seen this sort of thing happening between ground pours and on high current traces where you need a, a lot of connections between the bottom layer. So now I'm going to do my selection filter, make sure I only grab my vias, and I'm going to manually rename them uh, ground because that's exactly what this does is it connects it to ground. But before I do that, I'm going to go back into our schematic and something I forgot to do was name this trace ground I'm going to hit escape because I don't want to actually print it but it's a ground another way you could do it is add a ground symbol or part so if you go into the library and you search ground you got several options I usually like this one and if I connect that to it it will default the name to ground now I'll switch back to board and you can see the uh, name here on this foot pad change the ground and now I'm going to change these signals to ground and now they're connected and this should prevent me from getting an uh, error for my constraints list so I change all these to ground and I wish there was a way of just click grabbing them all and doing it but right now as far as I know Eagle Cat doesn't have a way of doing that so now they're all connected, however I'm still getting this error. You can see these red hash marks means uh, it doesn't like something. And the reason is because I'm putting this via right into the ground pour. It's uh, giving me an error saying it's not because it's in the mixed signal or the wrong signal, but because simply because the via is too close to the foot pad and it's literally on it. So if we go into our DRC I want to change the clearance on same signals because these are the same signals for via to zero and you can see it goes away and I don't really care this isn't going to be a problem for me so getting rid of that error by making it zero isn't going to affect any of my constraints